Good morning, Marist. Today is Friday, March 20th, 2015. My name is Alex Hale. And I'm Liv Kiley. Today we pray for Chanel College in Appia, Samoa. Delivering our prayer this morning is Stephen Spencer. Marist. It's a school most of us have come to know and love. The teachers, our fellow students, the Friday night football games, etc. This school is certainly wonderful for many reasons, but it can often feel a bit daunting and big, and can make us feel like we're just walking in an endless circle. Every once in a while, we just need to stop and breathe, and utilize the spiritual side of Marist. Just a few minutes of prayer and meditation a day can drastically alter one's mood for the better. I know it does for me. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to attend an amazing school like Marist. Enable us to take advantage of all it has to offer, especially its connection with you. Help us to slow down every once in a while and take in the beauty of this place, your creation. In your name we pray. Amen. Mary, Seed of Wisdom, pray for Thanks, Stephen. Well, it's a big week for all of us here at Marist. The third and final term of the 2014-2015 school year has officially begun. This is the home stretch, people. All of you have now begun scheduling for your next year here at Marist, and for some of you, even the year after that. Well, not all of us. Third term senior. Third term senior. For those of you who are making course requests, those are due by next Thursday. You'll have a decision by April 1st setting up for what could potentially be the worst April Fool's Day joke ever. But in the meantime, let's go to this week's episode of Jack's Fact. Did you know that the average projected lifespan for those born in Hawaii is 79.8 years? That is longer than any other state in the U.S. Did you know that Hawaii has its own time zone and does not observe daylight savings time? Oh, yeah. Away, away, away. Do you know that the theme for Sadie on Saturday is Hawaiian? Back to you in the studio! Mahalo, Jack. Now, if you weren't sure, Sadie is tomorrow, tomorrow. night. So, tomorrow. if you haven't asked someone, now's the time. Now's like, the time. Now, the T second. Tomorrow morning? Tomorrow morning could work. Tomorrow afternoon. Brunch? Lunch. Even mid-afternoon snack, tea time? Ask them. That's the time. <laughs> Your Sadie Heartthrobs this year for the ninth grade are John Fitzpatrick and Evan Pearson. For the 10th grade, your Sadie Heartthrobs are Chris Martell and Brandon Hall. For the 11th grade, Charlie Daniel and Matt Zowine. And the senior Sadie Court, Benji Fitton, Tim Kiley, Ryan Prater, Devin Summers, and Liam Torpy. We look forward to seeing you all Saturday night. Now, we do have a couple of announcements this morning. First, be sure to check your emails from a, for a message from Mrs. Luke. It'll have instructions on how you can order your very own Environmental Club t-shirt, sure to complete your wardrobe as the style statement of the year. They're already showing up on runways across the globe, and all you need is your student ID to get a sick t-shirt and then the uniform day on April 22nd, which is Earth Day. Next week, Maris will be giving out cookies and juice on Wednesday from 8 until 2. All you have to do to receive them is be a blood donor. In all seriousness, we're looking for students and faculty over the age of 16. So, Mr. Um, Vickery, is he... Mm, maybe, maybe. I, I think so. Well, you'll have to check, but probably. But we're looking for people that will be willing to <laughs> donate blood that could save someone's life. Please help us reach our goal of 38 pints. If you think you're interested in either making a difference in someone's life or just getting some cookies and juice, please contact Coach Blish to arrange an appointment. In other news, this Sunday from 3 to 5, our school will be hosting a Taste of Marist once again. It will be sure to be an incredible event, with dishes being prepared by both the Marist community and by several local restaurants, all of which are available for sampling. And finally, next week on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, You're in Town hits the stage. Tickets are on sale now and next week in the campus shop. We now turn to a quick look at the comedy musical about urine. You're in Town is basically about a water shortage that is happening in a fictional community. So all water, including the water used for toilets, is regulated. And that's the central conceit of the show is that there are these public bathrooms that you have to pay to use and there's no other way to go to the bathroom. It's the town wherever people learn to live in fear. Essentially, you're in town is uh, taking something that's very serious, which is a water shortage, and then making a mockery of it.
My character is Officer Lockstock. He will take you to a place called Urinetown. In the play, I am playing Penelope Pennywise, and she is sort of like the warden. She's actually a janitor, and she charges everyone to use the restroom. My character's name is Hope. Uh, she's kind of like the ditzy, like, girl who falls in love with the main character. I'm kind of like a thug that works for Officer Lockstock, and I just keep people in line by doing bad things. So I play a senator. My character is Mr. Caldwell B. Cladwell. Essentially, he is the person who's in charge of the city. He's essentially a corporate bad guy who uh, owns all of the water in your town. And he's also in charge of me, the senator, the politician, so I make all of the laws that say that, you know, you have to pee using one of his facilities, and he controls basically every official in the town. Wait, hold on, I have to have a, a different hat. People should come see Town because it's hilarious and completely over the top. It's very honest, but at the same time, it's really ridiculous. People need to come see Town because it is by far the best $5 you will ever spend on an evening's entertainment. There are moments in the show that are completely random. They'll catch the audience off guard, I guarantee it. In all honesty, the cast is fantastic. Every person in it is constantly involved, so it makes the set beautiful. Come see Town, March 25th, 26th, 27th, and 28th. That's Wednesday through Saturday and it's the best five dollars you will ever spend on an evening's entertainment. Thanks, Carly. We now go to our sports team with this week's War Eagle of the Week. This week's War Eagles of the Week highlight the girls' soccer team. The first is the most competitive on the team. The second is the girl who can throw the ball further than Jack Trainer. And lastly, we have the goalie, who actually has the best footwork on the team. This week's War Eagles of the Week are Kelsey Carrier, Grace Packer, and Carlin Zabrowski. Now we go to Carlin with the War Eagles of the Week. Thanks, Laura. So what's the new coaching change been like this year? Well, Carlin, Coach Young is our head coach this year. What's your fitness program been like this first half of the season? We've been getting a lot of reps in and um, keeping a lot of protein in the system and staying hydrated, just getting after it. Do you have any games this week? Actually, we do have a game this week. It's one of the biggest of the season against St. Pius. When is it? It's tonight, 5 p.m., on the freshly manicured grass of Stadler Field. If you're not there, I don't think we can be friends. Thanks for being our War Eagles of the Week. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us. us. Let's go, girls. One. Eight hundred. You're not gonna be fired with eight hundred. Harder. Ah, you're not gonna be fired with that. Thanks, Garland. This afternoon, be sure to come see our boys and girls soccer teams take on St. Pius right here at home. Girls will play at 5.30 and the guys take the field at 7.30. But if you can't be at the game, you can still watch it live because it's online on the NFHS website. NBC will be right there on the sidelines filming it. Now, by now, most of you have probably already trashed your March Madness brackets after only one day of the tournament. To bring in some more of the March Madness spirit, we now go to Kevin Jackson with Realish News. Welcome everyone to this Realish News Special Edition. I'm Kevin Jackson. Today we focus on the exciting, gambling-filled, heartbreaking time of the year that we like to call March Madness. In particular, we want to focus on one of the most controversial plays in basketball, taking a charge. What is a charge, you might ask? Well, here to help me demonstrate are a few friends. This is an offensive foul, more commonly known as a charge. Notice how the defender has his feet set, 
facing the player with the ball. This is a block. This means the defense wasn't in position to make the play. Block! It's time to show the people of Marist how to take a real charge. Let's do it. Thanks, Kevin. Birthday wishes go out today to Matthew Dunman, Scotty France, Lee Kim, Mr. Levdansky, Mr. Whit Miller, and Ryan Prater. And tomorrow to Taylor Conley, Caroline Maziotti, and Mr. Fong. And finally, a very happy birthday this Sunday to Basil Mirza. Thanks for watching this morning. My name is Alex Hale. And I'm Liv Kylie. Make it a great day and an even greater weekend. Oh, <laughs> 